So picture the scene. You've got a complete Active Directory environment in play. You've got a domain controller. You've got a DNS server. You've got a DHCP server. It's handing out addresses and authenticating users and managing this entire virtual world. What does it need? Redundancy. In this video, we're going to add a second domain controller for fault tolerance in our Active Directory environment. Hey everybody, Troy here, and we are back in the second part of our Active Directory deployment. I'm talking part two, part one was in the video just before this. If you wanna catch up to where we are right now with the infrastructure we're gonna build, have a look at the video in the description below. As always in this video, I'm gonna cover a variety of things. There's some timestamps here for you if you wanted to bounce through looking for something specific. If not, walk your way through with me step by step. We're gonna get this done. Now here's our goal for this particular video. What we're gonna build on is the infrastructure that I built in the previous video where we had a virtual machine running Windows Server 2022. That Windows machine was called DC01. It was running Active Directory Domain Services, DNS and DHCP, and it was handing out addresses and authenticating clients to a joined domain client called PC01. We also built some specific users in the form of a very straightforward organizational unit structure called ACME uh, with an IT group and a staff group. We've got myself as IT administrator and we've got a staff colleague called Batman who we've proven can authenticate against our domain controller and have access to this client machine. Now in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a second domain controller. This is gonna be a second domain controller to add fault tolerance and redundancy to our environment so in the event something happens to our initial or our existing primary domain controller, all our users and PCs can still authenticate against another Active Directory domain controller without interrupting our network. Let's do it. I'm going to move to my new server. There it is. I've got DC02 set up. What I've done here, everybody, is I've installed Windows Server 2022 and my core config included two things. What I did is I changed the name of this machine from its default name to DC02. That's the name it's going to take. I also configured a static IP of 192.168.0.2. It's the second machine on my network. It is statically assigned for best practices and it can communicate with my primary domain controller, DC01. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our Active Directory Services role and we're gonna make this machine a second domain controller for the first. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. This is the order that I find works best for me. What I'm gonna do first and foremost is I'm gonna add this machine to the domain of int.acme.com. I'm gonna actually join this machine to the domain first and then I'm going to install the requisite roles and install this as a secondary domain controller. Now there are alternative ways to do this. I'm just walking you through one way. You could install the Active Directory Services role. Then you could promote this to a DC and simultaneously join it to the domain. I find that this is a much more functional way of doing it. It's less prone to errors and it always gets me where I'm going. So let's do it that way. I'm gonna start off with a right click on my start menu. I'm gonna to go to my system tab and I'm gonna join this machine to the domain just like I did the PC, just like I would do with any machine. I'm gonna move down to my advanced system settings and you're gonna find a chance to name the computer where I can change it to bring this part of the domain. I'm gonna click on domain. I'm gonna type in int.acme. Dot com. It has to be exact, everybody. If I mistype this, it's not going to find it. The other thing that actually has to happen is I actually have to have my DNS pointing to the correct DNS server. Now, what I mean by that is that in order for this to work, it needs to be able to find the IP address of int.acme.com, which means my DNS server actually has to be configured statically on this machine. The preferred DNS is 192.168.0.1, so it should be able to resolve this with no problem. I'm gonna hit OK, and I'm challenged with the credentials. This is going to be the credentials for the domain. The domain is saying, do you have the right to join my world? And I need domain privileges to do so. I'm gonna type in my domain administrator privileges. 
administrator and my domain admin password. And as soon as it accepts the credentials, I should be welcomed to the int.acme.com domain. And there we go. I am now welcome to the domain. Everything is great. It prompts me to restart the computer. I'm going to hit close. I'll restart this right away and we'll join the domain. Excellent. And now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to log in as a domain administrator. Now look very carefully. I've got a local administrator account. And if I, if I use this local admin, I'm going to be logging in locally. There is an account called administrator that administers this computer and manages, it has the rights and privileges to manage this computer. I don't want to be logged in as this administrator. I want to be logged into uh, this machine as an administrator for Acme. Now watch what happens. This is kind of a cool thing. I'm going to type in the word administrator right here and look at what happened. Really important everybody. It said, well, I have an administrator account on this machine. Let's log in to administer and manage DC02. I don't want that. I want to use my domain administration credentials to manage this machine. So I've got two options. I have a domain administrator. My account that I set up in my previous video will actually open the door here. However, I could solve this problem by prepending my administrator account by typing in the word Acme with a backslash. And you can see just by prepending this, I have actually said I'm going to log into the, ad, the account called administrator on the acme.com domain. And I'm going to use my admin credentials here. And away I go. Okay, I harped on that for a second because it was really important because if you log in as the wrong administrator, a lot of different things will happen. You won't have the same rights and privileges to do what we need to do on this machine. So we have to make sure we get that right. Terrific. Up comes our server manager. We are now logged in as the domain administrator. So we have administrative privileges for the domain. Let's click on the local server and see that we can verify that. DC02 is now part of the int.acme.com domain. It is, my firewall is on. I have statically assigned the IP address of 192.168.0.2. Okay, we're just going to make this a domain controller. Let's start with installing the Active Directory Domain Services role. Dashboard, add roles and features. Next, role-based installation. It recognizes the configuration, my, my IP address, my computer name. Everything's great. Let's add Active Directory Domain Services as well as all the features. It's going to hit next. There's my group policy management uh, being included by default. Notice I am not installing DNS. It's going to do this for me. It does take me through the exact same wizard that we saw in the previous video where it warns me we should have more than one domain controller and it should have DNS, which we are completely aware of. Let's hit install and get this installation happening. And configuration complete. Installation set. Successful installation. Remember, we have a post configuration requirement that we're going to see. I'm going to hit close. And there is my little yellow notification up on the top right telling me that we're not done. We need to promote this to a domain controller. That's been our intent all along. So with Active Directory installed, we can now proceed to make this a domain controller on our Acme.com network. Let's do it. I'm going to promote this server to a domain controller. Up comes my Active Directory Domain Services Configuration Wizard. This time, I am not adding a new domain to a new forest. Now, this is one of the reasons that I like this way of doing it. I am now going to add this controller to an existing domain. And because this machine was already part of the int.acme.com world, all of this now is ready to go. So it discovered that, yeah, I'm already part of a world. I might as well become a controller in the world. That's the reason I did it in the order that I chose to do so. I could select and find a different domain, but this is exactly what I want to see. I'm going to simply hit next. 
Great, now I get a chance to specify the role of this DC. Now, by default, it is going to run domain name system, so it's gonna be a DNS server. We remember that it's gonna share DNS, actually, from the other domain controller. It is also going to be a responsible authoritative source of something called the global catalog, which means that it will have all the information that it needs to have with respect to the objects, resources, computers, users, everything on our Active Directory world. We also have a chance to designate this machine as something called a read-only domain controller. What that would mean is that we would not write changes to this DC. It's only going to receive information from another domain controller. So in other words, it reads information from another source. We can't make changes or write adjustments or anything like that to this DC. There's a variety of reasons why we would do that. Normally it's about security. Sometimes it's about propagation of WAN links. You're trying to expedite and make your whole production environment more effective. However, in this case, I I want this to be a fully functional domain controller and I'm going to leave the read only domain controller box unchecked. I need to give it a password for my DSRM. I'm going to hit next and it again warns me that it does not have DNS. I'm fine with this just like in the last video, just like in our last installation. Active Directory built DNS for us. I'm going to hit next and I'm going to let it find a replication. It is now going to pull information from another domain controller. And you can see it recognizes that dc01.int.acme.com is actually online talking. We're going to pull all the information we need replicating from that source. I could do any domain controller if there were more than one or I could simply select the one that I want. Either way, we are going to carry forward with our database configuration. Again, I'm going to accept my defaults here. And this leaves me a chance to install Active Directory domain services based on those parameters. There we go. I've passed my prerequisite check. And so all the elements have passed successfully. Active Directory telling me I can actually proceed with this installation. A couple yellow hazards here, but the most important thing that I want to see is this green checkbox saying that I can begin this installation. I'm going to pause the video so you don't have to wait for this, and I'll see you back shortly when this is ready to reboot. Oh, there we go. Successful configuration about to be signed out. I'm going to let this reboot. There we go, Acme Administrator ready to log on. You can see that now I have promoted this server to a DC. Already things are feeling and looking different. Let's log in and see what else has changed. Now as our environment loads, our server manager is gonna be one of the very first things to kick in. And we'll take a quick look and see what transpired between these servers. So things slowly loading here for me. Active Directory domain services are now loaded as well as my domain name system. So we can see that DNS as was, was part and parcel of this. Let's open a couple snap ins and see what replicated from the primary server. I'm gonna go to tools. First and foremost, I'm gonna go to Active Directory users and computers. Now remember, again, if you watch that previous video, you'll have seen that we actually had created a very specific set of organizational units. And in our int.acme.com, we had a high-level OU called acme.com. And inside there, there was an IT member called Troy, and there was a staff member called Batman. You can see that we pulled that information from the other domain controller, that replicated. Look at this, I'm gonna to go to computers. Oh, there is my domain join PC, PC01. And let's look at my domain controllers. There's my domain controllers organizational unit. And you can see that now I have both of my DCs1 and DC2 are right there and in play. Fantastic, let's talk DNS. I'm gonna go over to my DNS manager and let's see what we found here. I'm going to open a couple of these things. Let's go to my forward lookup zone and look at this. It now recognized DC02 as a name server. I'm going to right click here and go to my uh, properties here. So look at that. What it did was actually create a NS record as well as a host record for DC02. And it is now a fully functional name server in my Active Directory environment. 
I didn't have to do a thing. Now, if I look at the start of authority for this particular zone, this is DC02. So this is a fully functional authoritative zone. I'm going to cancel this. Let's see what happened with my reverse lookup zone. Oh, look at this. It created the reverse lookup zone. That's fantastic. Now, in the, in the previous video, we saw when we deployed DNS as part of Active Directory, it did everything except the reverse lookup zone. We built it when we deployed our first domain controller and we set it to replicate that information throughout the environment. And as soon as this machine became a second uh, domain controller, it actually created that reverse lookup zone as well. Take a quick look here. You'll see that the authoritative server, the SOA is actually DC02. So this isn't a secondary zone. This is an authoritative zone unto itself, but it replicates information and shares that information with DC01. Fantastic. Let's now do one final test. We want to verify. I want to test the replication. I'm going to show you that I could actually make a change to DC01 and have that replicated over to DC02. I could also make a change on DC02 and have it replicate over to DC01. To pop into DC01 really fast. There it is here. Let's pop into my Active Directory users and computers right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new organizational unit. Let's go Acme right click new organizational unit and I'm going to call this not just staff. I'm going to call we've got IT. We've got staff. Let's just call this one test. I'm going to use uh, all caps here so it stands out. There is now a new OU. I could put a user in there if I wanted to. Let's see if it replicated. I'm going to go back to my second domain controller. Let's open up my Active Directory users and computers and let's refresh. There we go. There it is. A couple refreshes to make that replicate. There's my replication. So we can see how quick it replicates. It's, it's instantaneous. I'm going to create a new user on DC02. Remember, this is not a read-only domain control. This is a writable second domain controller. Let's add a new user. And I'm going to call this test user. Okay, and I'm just going to go T user for the login name. I'm going to hit next, give it a password here. No problem. Uh, remove that checkbox, hit next. There's the user created. I did this on DC02. Now let's go back to my friend DC01 and see if I refresh here. There is my test user. It replicated from the other machine. Both domain controllers can read and write and serve as authentication, authorization, and accounting in our Active Directory world. DNS propagated immediately and automatically. I didn't have to do any additional configuration. That worked out without a hitch. The only thing I could do right now is, is I could configure DC02 as a second DHCP server, but that's been covered off in another video. We could do DHCP failover. I'll put that video in the description below. You could do that if you wanted to. You'd have an environment with complete failover for Active Directory, DNS, and DHCP. <laughs> Wicked, right? And so much fun to come. We're going to keep playing with this environment in future videos to see what further things we could do with Active Directory. See you again soon.